I will officially call to order this meeting of the State Canvassing Board. It is November 27, 2018 at 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, the State Canvassing Board is, of course, called pursuant to Article 7, Section 8 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. So before we do anything else, um, I just wanted to do, as we always do, uh, uh, give an opportunity here for the members of this board to introduce themselves. Why don't we just start on my left, Judge? Good afternoon. My name is Paul Scoggin, and I'm one of the judges of the 4th Judicial District. I'm Ivy Bernardson. I'm the Chief Judge of Hennepin County uh, uh, District Court, Judicial District. Steve Simon, Minnesota Secretary of State. Natalie Hudson. I'm an Associate Justice on the Supreme Court. Paul Thiessen, Associate Justice on the Supreme Court. Thank you all for participating. We really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the agenda. All members should have received in advance a copy of the proposed agenda. A motion and a second, and a vote will be necessary to approve the agenda. Is there a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails, and the agenda is approved. The next item on the agenda now is approval of the minutes of the August 14th, 2018 meeting. Again, the board members should have received in advance a copy of the proposed minutes. I'll entertain a motion and a second, and a vote, of course, to approve these minutes. So moved. And I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion prevails, and the minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is the presentation of the canvas report for the November 6, 2018 state general election. Uh, to give that report is the Elections Director for the Office of Secretary of State, Mr. Gary Poser. Mr. Poser. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary and members. Uh, we'll start with uh, the report you have in front of you that has the state seal on it, uh, titled the State of Minnesota Canvassing Report. So the numbers in this report are going to be the consolidated based on the numbers that were certified uh, by each of the county canvassing boards uh, as they reported them to us. So it, the report includes the results for all federal and state offices. Although if a race was entirely in one county, uh, that race has already been certified by the county uh, when the county uh, did their uh, canvassing board. Uh, so this board is certifying the results of the multi-county offices, even though there are other races in the report. Uh, if you'll turn to the first page, I just want to draw your attention then to the, to the column headings here. Uh, you'll see that we have numbers for every county is listed separately. Uh, so we have the county name in the left-hand column. Uh, the number of registered voters in that county as of 7 a.m. when the polls opened on Election Day. Uh, the next column is the number of individuals in that county that registered on Election Day. Uh, then we have the next column are the absentee and mail ballots. Uh, these are the regular, meaning that they received the full ballot, so they got to vote for all of the races uh, in that particular precinct. Uh, and then there's a separate column for the absentee ballots of individuals who are only eligible to vote for the federal offices. So these are the individuals who are the expatriates. Uh, they live permanently overseas. Uh, they're only entitled to vote for uh, the federal offices. And then finally, the right column uh, is just the total number of voting in each county. Uh, then if you will uh, turn your page uh, to page four, I'll just draw your attention then to, I'm sorry, to page three. Um, at the bottom of page three, I'll just uh, give you some of the numbers there uh, for then the entire statewide uh, totals. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice is in the far right-hand co column, we have 2,611,365 individuals who voted uh, in the state general election. Um, this compares to 2.9 million that voted in 2016 in the presidential election, and it compares to 1.9 million uh, who voted in the 2014 similar uh, gubernatorial election. So it was quite an increase in voting turnout uh, for this election compared to similar elections in the past, almost on par with uh, the presidential election. Uh, similarly, if you look in the uh, second column of numbers, the 213,999, those are the number of election day registrations uh, in the election this year. Uh, that compares to 353,169 in 2016, and it compares to, in 2014, 152,101. So again, uh, shows that we had a, a, a nice amount of Election Day registrations, but it also reflects 
the ability now of individuals to register online prior to the election as, as well as some other data sharing updates we do to registrations prior to the elections. So even though we're similar or getting close to that presidential turnout, we aren't quite as high in our election day registrations as we have been uh, even as recently as 2016. And finally, the absentee ballots, adding those two numbers together, the 637,244 and the 1,602, comes to about 638,846 individuals who voted by absentee or mail ballot. Uh, so they voted early. They didn't vote in the polling place on election day. Uh, that represents almost 24% of all voters uh, are, are taking advantage of voting by mail or voting early uh, as opposed to voting on election day itself. That compares to, uh, again, 678,000 individuals who, who voted by absentee ballot in 2016, which was about 23%. So we've actually increased uh, this year the number of individuals, uh, or the percentage of individuals voting by absentee. And back in 2014, there were only 235,000 individuals, or about 12% that voted absentee back in 2014. So the trend is certainly there too. Uh, have individuals voting by absentee ballot prior to the election. Um, just as a, another indication, the turnout of registered voters, so that includes the election day registrations, was just under 74 percent, so was 73.98 percent. Um, and the turnout of our estimated eligible voters, so there's just a little over 4 million eligible voters estimated in the state, and that was around 64.25 percent uh, of our eligible voters who voted. Again, that compares to 74.72% in 2016 and just over 50% in 2014 of the eligible voters. Mr. Poser, if I could interrupt you, I can't resist the question. Mm -hmm. That percentage of vote, could you, uh, and remember to speak loudly into the microphone, uh, where does that rank us? Uh, Mr. Secretary, members, I'd proudly say that that places Minnesota as number one in voter turnout nationwide uh, over all of the states. Uh, regaining our position. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so then after these statistics, uh, if you'll turn the page, you'll see then that we start to do the uh, vote counts by county for each of the races. So on pages four through eight, uh, there will be uh, the first race for U.S. Senator. Again, you'll notice the candidates there being uh, uh, Republican Jim Newberger, uh, Democrat Amy Klobuchar, uh, and then uh, Dennis Schuler and Paula, Paula Overby. Uh, you need to flip through the pages to get to page six, uh, where you would see then the vote counts um, for those individuals. Uh, and then similarly, uh, the report goes through uh, the additional U.S. Senate race for the partial term, uh, which starts on page nine. And then the congressional races uh, will start on page 13. Um, so if you have any questions for me as we just go through, I'm just drawing your attention to where uh, these uh, numbers can be found. I'd certainly be glad to talk any more about them uh, if you have any questions. Uh, the state legislative the races then uh, start on page 17. And you will note there that we do have one state Senate seat uh, that had a special election uh, that was held as part of the November election. Uh, and then that is followed by the 134 state representative district totals. Uh, starting there at the bottom of page 17. And then the constitutional offices uh, will start on page 43, uh, starting then with uh, the governor's race at the bottom of page 43. Um, I should note uh, uh, before we move on too much farther that actually if you turn back to page 19, I will call your attention to House District uh, 5A, um, and you'll notice that there's only an eight vote difference uh, between the two candidates in House District 5A, uh, and we'll talk about that as being eligible for the publicly funded recount uh, when we get to that point on the agenda. Just uh, wanted to point that out here. Um, and then finally, you'll see that on page 58 uh, is the start of the judicial seats uh, that some of the members um, might be interested in, uh, starting then with the Supreme Court and then going through uh, the district courts as well. And then finally, uh, when you get to page, following page 112, 
which is the end of our canvassing report. Uh, following that page starts the registered write-in report. So those individuals who asked to, who registered as write-in candidates and asked to have their votes uh, tallied as write-ins, uh, that report uh, is at the end of this report. Um, so the integration of the post-election equipment review numbers with this report will follow uh, during discussion of the post-election equipment review, uh, but that uh, is the presentation of the initial a canvassing board report of, of what was reported to us by the counties. Uh, so I'd gladly answer any questions if there are any. Are there any questions or comments by any members? I have a question. Yes. So, Mr. Poser, were, are there any ballot irregularities that were called to the attention or that were, where there were any motions filed uh, related to ballot irregularities or any other unusual? Um, Judge Bernardson, uh, no. There were some uh, individual candidate uh, issues uh, prior to the ballots being prepared uh, before the absentee voting period started. But no, there were not any ballot issues that were reported uh, during the voting period and nothing that went to uh, any type of uh, errors and omissions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Members? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will then entertain a motion for and a second for approval of the canvas report. So moved. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion to approve the canvas report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails and the report has been approved. The next item on the agenda is the presentation of the report of the post election equipment review, again by Mr. Poser. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary and members. Uh, this will start to refer to the report you have in front of you that says statewide PER changes report. Um, so as part of the process, uh, 211 precincts uh, statewide were reviewed by the county auditors as required by as part of the post-election equipment review. Um, so that means at least two precincts per county in the smaller counties uh, needed to be randomly selected. Uh, there were three precincts needing to be selected if a uh, county has between 50 and 100,000 registered voters. And if they have over 100,000 registered voters, then they either need to select four precincts or 3% of the total number of precincts uh, in their county. So that's why you'll see that there's a variety of number of precincts uh, in the different counties as we work our way through the report. Uh, this year we had four races that uh, were required to be reviewed as part of this audit process. Uh, we had both U.S. Senate seats up, which added an additional race uh, to be part of this review. And then each of the U.S. Uh, representatives and the governor's race uh, would make up the four races in each precinct uh, that were reviewed. Um, the, the review then is used to determine where all of the ballots are counted manually, and they determine if the machine counts were within a half of 1% uh, of the actual numbers that were manually counted or uh, the, the audit could be escalated. Uh, the board members have the change report in front of you uh, showing each precinct by county and any changes that result to each of the candidates in those offices. Um, none of the reviews resulted in escalations. However, I will uh, call your attention to the Ramsey County results uh, when we get to the governor's portion of this report. Um, so you'll see that we start out then with U.S. Senator. Um, if you go to page 19, um, at the top half of page 19, you'll see the office totals uh, then for the U.S. Senate race. Um, so you'll see there uh, that uh, Mr. Newberger uh, will receive an additional 10 votes as a result of the uh, review. Uh, Ms. Senator Klobuchar will receive an additional 16 votes. Uh, Mr. Schuler, seven votes. Uh, and there were no changes for uh, Ms. Overby. So that's kind of how the report then lays out. It gives each of the uh, precincts within each county the individual results, uh, but then at the end of each race, you'll see the total effect uh, from that audit uh, on that particular race. Similarly then, if you go to page 37, uh, you'll see the total changes uh, for this uh, U.S. Senate seat of a partial term. Uh, with differences of 5 and 16 and 11 uh, for the candidates uh, in that race. And then that is followed by the congressional races uh, are, are on pages 37 to 58. And then on page 76, which is the last page, 
uh, you'll see the results, the total results uh, for the governor's race. Uh, and as I noted before, I wanted to call your attention to the Ramsey County uh, totals for governor on page 70. So if you'll turn back to page 70 at the bottom, I just wanted to note if you look at the two St. Paul precincts, uh, you'll note that uh, those numbers uh, uh, certainly came, uh, uh, they drew my attention simply because they're above the usual one or two votes uh, that we would see uh, throughout the rest of the report. Um, so I did contact Ramsey County uh, with these when they reported these numbers to us to verify that they were explainable uh, as marks that could not be read by the equipment uh, and Ramsey County assured me that they were. Um, so there's, this report itself uh, accurately reflects what was reported to us uh, that you will then be certifying. Um, that being said, uh, the office has had some discussions about these uh, two precincts um, and the office is interested in inspecting these ballots uh, for these precincts uh, using our authority under statute 204B.40, which allows us after the election is over to inspect ballots, uh, to evaluate election procedures, uh, looking for possible legislation changes, uh, maybe putting additional stipulations on equipment if that merits it uh, when we certify voting equipment. Uh, so we intend to look at these ballots after uh, the election here is complete. Um, the office is also would like to have these two precincts included in the performance review, which is going to be the next step on our uh, agenda. And so I'll talk about uh, getting those included, how we'll get those included in to the performance review as well. Um, but I'd be glad to answer any questions from the board about the change report. Uh, and I believe Mr. Mansky is here from Ramsey County as well. If you did have any particular questions uh, over the Ramsey County uh, results as well. Questions or comments, Judge Bernhardt? Um, so I'm, I'm a little, could you explain when you're doing this uh, equipment review, so the, let, let's just take the Ramsey mm -hmm. result. It shows, so they're, they're machine counted, right? Mm -hmm. And then when this post election equipment review is done, are they looked at on a different machine? They are actually, uh, Judge Bernison and uh, Mr. Secretary, they are actually, as part of the audit, they are manually recounted. So the machines are not used okay. during the recount. The actual ballots are looked at to determine voter intent. Okay, that, so that, thank you. And then, so that means that when the manual count was done, uh, Governor-elect Walls and Governor, Lieutenant Governor-elect Flanagan got 36 more votes than were what was reflected in the machine count. Is that is that accurate? What I just yes, said. that okay. is correct. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Okay, and so that's why you want to look. That's why you want to do what you want to do. Correct. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members? Okay. Well, then I will entertain a motion for approval of the report of the post-election equipment review. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Now second. Okay. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion prevails and the report is approved. The next matter on the agenda is the signing of the certification. Yes. Um, so, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, prior to that, uh, the staff here will pass out the, what we did now is adjust the numbers that we originally uh, talked about. Uh, so the staff then will pass out to the members uh, the consolidated uh, canvas hearing report that now uh, includes the adjustments that were just approved. Uh, as part of the performance review. Um, and so I will just make one uh, brief uh, mention to you. If you look at page six, um, we had looked at the U.S. Senate race uh, and I discussed those numbers with you uh, just to uh, uh, confirm for you that on the original report you certified, Mr. Newberger received 940,927 votes. He got 10 additional votes as part of the performance review, and you'll see on this report then he has the 940,437 reflecting the adjusted amount. And similarly, uh, Senator Klobuchar got an additional 16 votes, uh, which is reflected in this, uh, bringing her total up to 1,566,174. Um, Mr. Schuler got an additional seven votes, uh, and then Ms. Overby had no change in her votes uh, between the two reports. So I just wanted to confirm for you that these, this report then reflects the entire adjusted numbers. Justice Thiessen, did you? Okay. Any other 
comments? With that, then, I think at this point, Mr. Poser, it's appropriate for me to uh, have members. I'll start out. I'm on the top here. And just hand it to my. Thank you, members. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the selection of the post-election performance review precincts. That is done by individual board members. And so, Mr. Poser, do you want to talk about that? Yes, uh, Mr. Okay. Secretary, I can give you a, a brief uh, overview. Is that the 211 precincts that were part of the uh, uh, post-election review where those uh, numbers were audited uh, by each of those precincts, those 211 precincts spread out, spread out throughout the state are eligible to become part of the post-election uh, e performance review, which is conducted by our office. Um, so at a minimum, four precincts per congressional district are selected, uh, and then our office goes and looks at uh, the supplies that were used in the polling places and, and review the, the paperwork uh, that was accomplished during election day. Um, so we would draw four precincts at a minimum from each of the eight, so there'd be 32 precincts uh, that would be reviewed. Uh, as we spoke earlier, uh, we would like to make sure that we include the two St. Paul precincts as part of this process. Um, so there are only actually a total of seven precincts in Congressional District 4 that were part of the process uh, because there's only two counties, Ramsey and Washington County are the only two in that Congressional District and Washington County is in three different Congressional Districts so they only have two precincts that they selected that were part of this Congressional District. So we really only have a total of seven. And when we get to Congressional District 4, we'd like to pull the first four. If these two precincts from St. Paul are in the first four, we'll be happy. Uh, if they are not as part of the first four, uh, we'll just ask that you draw additional precincts at random, meaning we could end up with all seven of them uh, as part of the review. Um, so that's how we propose to uh, get to randomly selecting them, but including them uh, in, the, in the review. Uh, so what we will do now is we'll go through Congressional District uh, each congressional district one at a time and if each of the four members other than the secretary would select uh, one of the cards for that precinct out of that congressional district and then if you would uh, read the name of the precinct uh, and county uh, as you pull the card uh, we will then include these in the precincts that will be part of the performance review. Brown County, New Ulm, Ward 1, Precinct 2. Reborn County, Bath Township. Blue Earth County, Mapleton. for uh, Congressional <laughs> District 2. Wheels? 
Goodhue County, uh, Wausau Township. Dakota County, Lakeville, Precinct 4. Scott County, New Prague, Precinct 2. Scott County, Savage, Precinct 9. Uh, Hennepin County, Brooklyn Park, Ward E, Precinct 40. Hennepin County, Maple Grove, Precinct 1. Hennepin County, Medina, Precinct 1A. Hennepin County, Brooklyn Park, Ward C, Precinct 4. Washington County, Lake Elmo, Precinct 1. Ramsey County, St. Paul, Ward 4, Precinct 10. Ramsey County, Shoreview, Precinct 3. The pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> County Montevideo Precinct 2. Okay. We'll, we'll draw a few additional. <laughs> Ramsey County, St. Paul, Ward 4, Precinct 4. Okay. We have a winner. <laughs> we do. So. Then, then we don't need to draw the last two. <laughs> Hennepin County, Minneapolis, Ward 1, Precinct 9. Hennepin County, Minneapolis, Ward 7, Precinct 3. Hennepin County, New Hope, Precinct 1. County, Minneapolis, Ward 9, Precinct 9. <laughs> Sherburn County. Livonia Township, Precinct 2. Benton County, St. George Township. Carver County, Carver. Wright County, Silver Creek Township.
Kitson County, Deerwood Township. Norman County, Ada, Ward 2. Beltrami County, Bemidji Township. Red Lake County, County Wiley Township. St. Louis County, Cook. Carlton County, Scanlon. Mille Lacs County, Onamia. Carlton County, Skelton. That completes the uh, random draws. So I will now entertain a motion for approval of the post-election performance review precincts. Is there a motion and second? I will make that motion. And I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails and the performance review precincts are approved. The next item on the agenda is the contingent recount plan for possible publicly funded recount uh, Mr. Poser. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary and members. Uh, as we noted, as we walked through the canvassing report, uh, the state Senate, uh, the state House race in House District 5A qualifies for a publicly funded recount. It's under the half of a percent difference. Remember, it was only that eight vote uh, difference. Um, so you have in front of you the proposed contingent publicly funded recount plan uh, that had also been provided to you earlier. Um, and it also has been provided uh, to the uh, both of the candidates, their legal counsel. Um, so uh, the difference here is that they qualify for the publicly funded recount. However, they need to request, the losing candidate needs to request uh, the recount in writing. And I will say that just before the meeting started, I was handed uh, a letter requesting the recount. Uh, so uh, we will be having a recount uh, in, in this uh, House district. Um, so the plan uh, uh, that's been provided to you is the same. It's modeled after the plan that was used in 2016 uh, for the recount that was held in uh, Senate District 14 uh, between Senator Ralph and Mr. Wolgamott uh, as a result of the close race uh, in 2016. Uh, so the plan designates myself as the state recount official and designates uh, deputy recount official, uh, which is consisting uh, in this case of the Beltrami County Auditor who uh, volunteered to be the deputy recount official uh, for all four counties uh, that are involved. Uh, so it involves Beltrami, Cass, Hubbard, and Itasca County uh, are all encompassed uh, as part of this house district. Um, so all of the ballots will be brought to uh, Beltrami uh, County uh, and uh, the deputy recount official then will conduct uh, the recount all, all out of the one location. Um, and the recount would begin at 9 o'clock on Monday, December 3rd. Um, and then finally, the, so the, uh, the uh, final page of the plan uh, shows how the summary statement uh, uh, that will be used, uh, what the layout of that uh, worksheet will be as well. So I'd be glad to, uh, uh, you did receive copies of it, I'd be glad to answer your questions you might have, or if you would like me to walk further through the plan, I'd be happy to do so. Any questions or requests or comments from members? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the contingent recount plan for possible publicly funded recounts. So moved. Uh, and I'll second. And moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails and 
the contingent recount plan has been uh, approved. Next on the agenda is the contingent recount plan for possible discretionary recounts. Mr. Poser. Uh, Mr. Secretary, members, uh, you were also provided a, a copy of, of this proposed plan as well. Uh, we discussed the publicly funded uh, plan, uh, which are eligible uh, if they were under a half of a percent for the state legislative races or if they were under a quarter percent for congressional races or any of the statewide offices. Uh, House District 5A was the only one that qualified for that particular recount. Uh, this, con this discretionary recount applies to anybody who didn't meet those um, thresholds. So if their race in a House district was more than a half of a percent or more than a quarter percent in the other races, uh, they could ask for a discretionary recount. Uh, the only difference being they would need to pay for that, uh, the cost of that recount themselves. Um, and so this is just set up as a, uh, a contingency in case uh, any individual uh, were to ask us for a recount and be willing to pay for it would allow us to get started on a recount without uh, the board meeting again. I will say that I have not had any conversations with uh, any candidates uh, from any of the other races expressing an interest at this point in a discretionary recount. Any questions or comments from board members? Yes. Probably more curiosity, but given your expert status, which is soon going to be lost to the state of Minnesota, Mr. Poser, so how do you determine the the assessment for the cost? Uh, uh, Judge Iver, <laughs> Bernardson, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, um, in the past uh, uh, we, two years ago, we did have uh, interest kind of being expressed in Congressional District 8 at the time, um, and we asked each of the individual counties involved in the particular race what their estimated costs would be. Uh, we compiled that information and then uh, provided it to the candidates. So you would do that on an individual basis if someone did express an interest in a recount? Correct. We okay. would we would ask then, the individual, the counties that would be involved. Okay, and then the, so the money goes back then on a pro rata on, on as much as each entity has asked for. I take it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions by members? Okay. Well, I'll then uh, entertain a motion for approval of the contingent recount plan for discretionary recounts. So moved. And seconded. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion prevails and the contingent recount plan for discretionary recounts has been approved. The next item on the agenda is the presentation of requests for recounts, if any. Mr. Poser? I think uh, that's you what sort we've of just already completed. Talked about that. Right, so we know we have the one. Yes. Okay, the last item on the agenda is for announcements and recess. There's one formal announcement on there, but I want to make one other announcement. And Judge Bernard, since uh, previewed it, but it's, it's public knowledge, but, but it's, I think it's important at this meeting. Mr. Poser, our elections director, is retiring from service, uh, well, retiring period, uh, from this job. And it is well earned and well deserved. And let me say this for those who, who don't know. If there were a Mount Rushmore in Minnesota for election administration and excellence, Gary Poser would be one of the people on that Mount Rushmore. And I don't just say that uh, because of the time over the last almost four years that I've worked with him. He's held this particular position as elections director for the Office of Secretary of State for going on 12 years. Um, but before I had this job, I knew of his reputation uh, uh, for excellence and integrity. Uh, and before he was with the state, he served in a similar capacity in two counties, in Washington County and Anoka County, where he distinguished himself and earned the respect of his peers um, and everyone in the election community. And I have to tell members particularly, judges and justices will understand this and appreciate it, um, perhaps more than most, that I remember a couple years ago when Yale Law School was putting together a panel on election administration. Guess who they called? Not me. They <laughs> called Mr. Poser. And Mr. Poser then was, you know, uh, flown to Yale Law School. That's just one of the many. I use that as an, a, a suitable example for this, this panel. Uh, but he's been the head of two prestigious national elections administrations organizations just within the last few years. And everywhere I go, when I have uh, on occasion when I, I travel and talk to people around the country, they fill my ear with compliments and praise for Gary Poser. And so um, it's. Um, uh, with some sadness uh, that we say goodbye to him, not until January 4th, so you're not off the hook yet. 
but I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge his excellence, his outstanding career, and the respect that he has earned from so many, not just in the state, but all across the United States of America. So, Mr. Poser, I want to give you an opportunity to say a little bit of something, but I want to thank you on behalf of all the people of Minnesota and on behalf of our democracy. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. And I'll try and get through this. Um, so, uh, I just want to thank you for allowing me to uh, uh, say a few words. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank uh, my staff here at the Secretary of State's office uh, for their dedicated administration uh, in this last election cycle. I'm very proud of the technical and administrative tasks that were completed and for having all of our applications from the website to the statewide voter registration system to election night reporting uh, all went so well this year. Uh, it's been a year of challenges from the last minute filings and withdrawals that occurred uh, in, during the filing period in June. Uh, we've implemented multi-factor authentication, uh, implemented electronic rosters and changes to help local ele election officials administer direct absentee balloting uh, this year. Those are some of the no more notable enhancements uh, that were delivered this year and I'm very appreciative of all of the hard work of the staff. Um, yeah. um, that being said, it's an emotional or a milestone day for me today. Uh, being my last state general election canvassing board meeting. Uh, while we may have a quick canvassing board meeting following the recount, uh, it's not going to be the same momentous occasion uh, as this meeting is for me. So I want to thank Secretary Ritchie uh, and Secretary Simon uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve the voters of Minnesota as the Director of Elections uh, for the past 12 years. I'm grateful for being lucky enough uh, to have a job that I enjoyed uh, and that utilized my talents. Uh, this election cycle has completed my 17th state general election uh, over the years. Uh, as the Secretary alluded to, uh, I did five election cycles in each of Washington and Anoka counties, uh, one election cycle in Hennepin County and the last six uh, election cycles here at the Secretary of State's office. Uh, I've experienced a, a lot of different voting methods. Uh, when I worked in Washington County, uh, we used four different types of voting all in the same election, being hand counting, uh, punch card, lever machines, optical scan voting, uh, all were administered in the same election. Uh, I participated in some notable elections, uh, including the 1990 governor's race uh, with a vacancy and nomination, and similarly in the 2002 U.S. Senate race. Obviously, the nationally watched 2000 presidential election uh, would certainly stick out in my mind. Uh, I conducted some notable recounts, including a county sheriff uh, recount in 1994, the U.S. Senate race in 2008, and the 2010 governor's race uh, all certainly uh, come to mind as being notable for me. Uh, I also want to thank the justices and the judges that are on the canvassing board uh, here today as well as those who have served uh, over the past 12 years. I'm grateful that you've used your valuable time to help us finalize these last important steps in officially certifying our election results as well as reviewing the occasional challenge ballots uh, during recounts. I've taken great pride in representing Minnesota in organizations and national meetings and have been known to brag about our election system, including holding that coveted number one voter turnout nationally. Uh, it's been quite a journey, uh, but I can honestly say I'm looking forward to uh, retirement um, and uh, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to make a few comments today. Thank you, Mr. Posner. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And now we go about the process of choosing not your replacement, but your successor. Words are important, right? Yes. So um, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. And, uh, and we'll be seeing you again, of course, because the one announcement I do want to make is that um, a future meeting of this state canvassing board is set for December 17th, 2018.
2018 at 1.30 in the afternoon to receive the recount report of the recount in House District 5A of the ballots cast in the November 6, 2018 general election. So at this point, are there, are there any other announcements or comments by members? Okay, if not, then this meeting of the State Canvassing Board is recessed to the call of the chair or until December 17th, 2018 at 1.30 p.m. to canvass the results of the recount from the 2018 general election for House District 5A. Thank you. We stand in recess.